perhaps <laughs> where perhaps Kachiko and the rest of his team are, are trying to game OPEC. If they're asking us for a court, we need to find oil elsewhere. And if uh, need be, we could uh, play the game that every oil producers play. We agree to something, everybody behave somewhat else. Yes, well, it'd be fair if they give us a little bit more time to even out our production to about 1.8 million barrels per day. If we look at um, past months, it's slowly coming up from 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, and now 1.8. So it would be fair to give us three months to actually have a production about 1.8. Then they give us very, you know, much more severe consequences. If, if we are given three months, three months that will be uh, ending in November, yes. technically speaking. Well, yes. But then, <clears throat> so far, there's, everyone seems to be on the bandwagon of trying to stabilize prices. This is for everyone's interest anyway. Everybody, everybody needs the price. Uh, but again, once the, United, the U.S. Uh, uh, sorts out its uh, cleanup of these uh, uh, natural disasters, the, the shale producers are going to come back very furiously at OPEC and Russia, won't they? Well, they could come back very furiously, or they couldn't. So it could, you know, it could go either way. I mean, definitely, if they come back, it's going to counter the it's going to counter the um, supply and management that they're doing right now, and prices could plummet. But it seems like everyone wants to, everyone, Kumbaya, everyone wants to make sure that oil prices are, you know, somewhat stable at, at current levels. <clears throat> but then we need to also understand that demand is picking up. So EIA and the OPEC has seen that demand for this oil, um, there's, there's some sort of um, expansion in developing economies, like there's going to be increased oil demand in Europe and in the U.S., which means that if there's increased demand, that means prices, supply, the, the supply, a demand balance will literally um, even out. Where is the optimism for this price rally? Uh, and do you think uh, it's going to be, is it sustainable? If it's yes, how long do you think uh, it will be sustainable? Or if you think, well, this optimism is just, uh, uh, it's just uh, uh, a fly in, in the ointment, what do you think? Well, if you look at the, if you check the uh, Bloomberg um, index, if you see oil prices have stayed at 55, at least 54 for through three weeks now and um, that is good news in the sense that what we are now seeing is some, if not marginal an increase in prices but this is just building up towards this is this is just a build up for the um, OPEC meeting coming up so far but then oil prices like we say most times is very extremely sensitive any news could come up and knock prices back down but we don't see prices going back below fifty dollars per barrel rates. we see trading below we see trading above fifty to 60, so it's going to trade very tightly within that range. But you know, so far I think the days of lower oil prices may be may be gone, and days of very high oil prices are is, is history. Well, the, the table I'm looking at that uh, uh, you and your team uh, has put together there, uh, showing a uh, uh, year to date for for Brent at just 1.14 percent uh, negative. We haven't seen any significant gain uh, so far this year for for the U.S. oil WTI. That's even much deeper in terms of uh, decline. Uh, this uh, speaks to the fact that this year, has anyone made money selling trading oil? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, typically in business there are some gains and losses, but so far it's much better than what it was um, three months ago, four months ago anyway. So oil, no one thought oil would actually be above 50 or even 56. So we thought that the most, the sweet spot was 50, but now it's at 56, so which is, you know, better. Uh, are we heading towards 60? It's a probability if demand picks up, like most energy giants are, you know, forecasting increased demand growth in major developing countries and developed countries. So that means increased demand will mean increased demand for these commodity, which will, you know, pop up prices. So, you know, it's, it's a gradual process, a story that builds up every time and every news triggers prices in any direction. I'm, 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 I'm interested in this because uh, uh, if it's 56, some folks think we could still see 60, uh, even though we're looking at a Q4 uh, in just uh, by the end of next week. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a possibility. That's a possibility. We could see oil price touch 60, but we're not sure when, but we could see that touch 60. Uh, at 56 or so, Nigeria is very comfortable, aren't we? Yes, we are. I mean, it's, In terms of our, of our, of our, of our budget, it is, it, it is higher. It, it is much higher compared to, it's about... Um, 12 percent, it's about 12 and higher than our, $12. 12 dollars higher than our uh, projection of 44.5 dollars per barrel, so there's enough room for accretion. Hmm. Is there anything 
uh, else that you think um, Nigeria's oil minister is likely going to say at this meeting. Uh, of course, we know uh, Bakindo, who is the uh, Secretary General of OPEC, will, will not be, may not be able to do much yes. uh, because uh, uh, he's speaking for everybody and for, for, for the uh, group. Uh, but Kachiko will most likely be the guy going from room to room uh, at the headquarters trying to find out who is on the side of Nigeria and, uh, well, by, uh, by extension, Libya as well, to, to get them out of the meeting. But it was surprising mm -hmm. that they were invited formally to the meeting. The last time he had uh, a national assignment here at home, he couldn't attend. But this time he's, yeah. he's going out now to attend, which means he believes that this time he's got to be there physically uh, to, to ensure that some folks don't pull the rug under Nigeria's feet while he's, while he's away. Yes. Well, it is a critical meeting. Um, Nigeria is invited, Libya is invited, and we said those countries are now seeing massive improvement in their oil production. And, you know, other members want to know you guys have to be, you have to join us as well. Your production is coming up. We gave you that leeway because we saw your oil sector suffer. So your production is back up. What is, you know, what is the deal? We have to, we all have to be on the same page. So that is what the meeting, you know, is going to be about. But then, we are not sure what the outcome will be, but so far it is positive. The news so far is sending off positive sentiment. Everyone is looking to comply. There's peace. There's no some sort of um, discord amongst the members. And um, yes, so far so good. Yeah, so far so, so, far, so good. Uh, the last few days I've been looking at the news wire as if there's going to be any very no. major no. uh, speech from, from, from uh, the major, the, the usual guys, Qatar, Saudi no. Arabia, and uh, Kuwait or, 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 or Russia, and it all seems to be very, very quiet yes. uh, before this meeting. So that looks like, well, let's hope things stay that way yes. and everybody behaves uh, until the meeting is over. Well, yes, the only, the only country that's come out to speak is Iraq, and he's suggesting, just like some, or some other members are no, suggesting deeper cuts, but then it would be quite premature to speak about that right now. No, oh, no, no, Iraq <coughs> will say that because they are producing so much oil. Yes. Have a great day. Thank and, you so much. Uh, see you sometime, maybe next week. Okay. Adair Konobi, an economist and one of the research analysts at Financial Derivatives. So when we come back, we're going into the import substitution policy strategy of the government and why is the central bank using the foreign exchange approach to ramp things down.